Alright, welcome everyone, this is Ruby Radar. Today we're going to be playing the Blackwell Legacy. This is a point and click adventure game by Wajidai Games, made in the mid 2000s. I am really keen to check it out, it's apparently quite spooky, it's fully voice acted, and has pixel art like the old adventure games, which I'm really keen to give it a try. It's going to be a completely blind playthrough, I don't know anything about it apart from the description. Double check the description for this and any other further installments I record, because I'll make a listing of any content warnings. Apparently it can get quite dark, which I'm really keen to check out. But if you're not, that's cool too. Either way, let's get started. We'll see what this is about. So, I guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure. I hardly know you. But you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Wherever you are. What a morning. At least I'm home now. Okay, so to interact with the objects or characters, move the mouse cursor over them and left click. There's a strange kid standing in front of Rosa's door. Try interacting with him to see what he wants. Okay, so her name's Rosa. It was a pretty good little introduction. I'm really curious about it. I love the illustrations so far. They look really good and I'm really excited to see where this goes. I guess we'll just talk to this teenager. Hi there. Um, hi. So who are you visiting today? Express surprise. Laugh it off. Oh, cool. Oh, ha ha. Seriously, who are you here to see? I can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. I mean, I guess we can try stating the facts. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. Kind of spooky. Is it being obstructive on purpose? Hmm. Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right, Jim. Where's the regular doorman? Geez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen them. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. Ah, okay. Regardless. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. I, mean, I don't think any of these things are going to help. What about the strike? How long is the strike going to last? I don't know. Could be a couple hours or a couple days. Depend on whether they reach a settlement or not. I don't know the details. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there! And I want to go there, thank you very much. Oh. Hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason, thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True, but I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. Well, she sort of says she doesn't have any proof, but I guess we can see what she says. I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. Bro. I don't think this is really going to help, but 
It seems to be within Rose's vibe here currently. Out of my way. I'm going in. I wouldn't do that. Why? Are you going to stop me? Me? No. But I've got a cell phone in my pocket with 911 program, Dan. All I have to do is hit send and the cops will be here in five minutes. Are you serious? Totally serious. I don't believe this. Okay, I have no ID and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? She could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. She lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the morning. You could look for her there. This dude that just got called in randomly sure seems to know a lot about everyone here, and I don't. Well, just because I like checking every single dialogue. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go all the way to the park to look for a woman who might be there, and if she recognizes me, then, and only then, I'll be granted the privilege of entering my own home? That's pretty much it, yeah. This is really stupid. I'm not the one who forgot my ID. Well, alright, I guess we're going to the park then. I'll be back. See you around. Rosa is carrying something. Let's see what it is. To activate the inventory bar, move your mouse cursor to the top of the screen. Okay, cool. I was going to say... Alright, what's this letter? Oh, okay, so it's dated October 12, 2006. Dr. Donald Quentin, Bellevue Medical Hospital, New York. Miss Blackwell, my name is Dr. Donald Quentin and I was your aunt's primary care physician here at Bellevue Hospital. I have seen to your aunt's needs since she arrived here 25 years ago. Please accept my heartfelt condolences for your loss. Feel free to visit my office at any time. I'm sure we have much to discuss. Sincerely, Donald Quentin, MD. So that was potentially the ashes she discarded just before. Alright, so we exit this way. Oh, we have a little map. This is very retro. So we can actually go to the Bellevue Psychiatric Hospital or the Washington Square Park. Now, obviously she has that letter for a reason, so definitely worth going there. But I guess we'll go to the park first. Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty. I wonder why. Oh, and again, like the backgrounds are just really lovely, really vibrant, that really retro pixel style. I'm really impressed by this. Please note, dog walking park is closed until further notice. Hmm. There's no reason to go in there. Really good music too as well, I'm really vibing with this. Doesn't look like there's much I can actually check out here, so I guess to the fountain? Mmm. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. Oh boy, she is unfortunately very reliable. He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. Can you pet the dog? I don't think so. Ah. Uh. Okay. So it kind of follows you around. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti Sharma, was it? This is going to be awkward. I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. She looks very cool and she's a musician. That's Nishanti Sharma. My next door neighbor, apparently. She's playing some sort of flute. Alright, let's have a chat. Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. This is literally me of my late teens. Alright, here I go. Um, um, uh, no. Okay, that didn't go so well. I just need to work myself up to it. Alright, well, let's try again, then. Okay, you can do this. Right. Um... Crap. 
calm down. Need to calm down. Hmm, maybe we should have gone to the psychiatric place first. Understandable, she's had a pretty stressful morning. Right, this is it. Hi. Um, can I... Damn it. This is not working. I can't do this. I just can't. Alright, I'll try one more time. Otherwise, this is unfortunately an adventure game puzzle that I'm going to have to figure out. No. I can't do this. I just can't. I'll just have to wait until she's finished. Or, I don't know. I can't do this with all those people staring at me. Okay. That definitely feels like an adventure game puzzle because she's giving us a hint. Is the dog a clue? He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. I don't think so. But he looks so cute. It definitely feels like a typical adventure game puzzle that the dog is following me for some reason. Huh. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. It was an adventure game puzzle. They're all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you. The lady next door. Yeah, hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No, Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Okay, cool. That wasn't as hard as some adventure game puzzles. King's Quest, Monkey Island, I'm looking at you. Alright. Truck it off, explain the situation, or compliment the pooch. Well, I have to compliment the pooch. He's a very good boy. That's a cute dog you've got. <laughs> Isn't he just? Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh, great. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um... Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see? He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. Mm. Are you alright? I'm fine, I just need to get home. Alright, let's keep walking. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rosangela. She lives here. He does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Hmm. This feels a little vibe. Also, I cannot get over the little smile that she tried to do. It was so funny. At least Ashanti seems really lovely. Well, now you're sure. And you must be so proud of yourself. Well... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Sure, maybe. No maybes. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um, their names are me, myself, and I. <laughs> um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rosangela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rosangela's kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. 
Well, that was nice. She was lovely. I'm a little bit concerned about Rosangela, though. That She's obviously not doing apartment. very well. The elevator. I can't remember who lives there. That door leads to my apartment. Well, I still think we should check out the psychiatric place, but I guess we'll go home first. Home. Thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Ugh. This is a really cute- Hello? This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes? I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Yes, I received it. I haven't had the time to come by, though. That's alright. I'm sure you're busy. However, should you find the time today, my entire schedule is free. I... sure. I I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good day. If I don't visit him, he's just gonna keep bothering me. I suppose I should just get it over with. Well, that's clever. So yeah, if you don't choose to go to the hospital, I guess he prompts you. That's awesome. I love this little apartment. It's really cute. The pink walls are very my vibe. Just some old book review clippings. Just a trash can filled with crumpled up novel ideas. Oh, she's a writer. My computer. It's a bit old, but it lets me access the internet and do my writing. She is, and that's cool. Well, that's fair. I mean, you don't need to go out that much to be a writer. That's Griff, the P.I. Bear. I've had him as long as I can remember. He's in horrible shape, but I don't have the heart to throw him away. I, just, I cannot get over that smile. It's incredible. This is the only living plant I own. I bought it two years ago. It's still living, despite my total lack of care. I must have watched all these a dozen times. This TV was here when I moved in. It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. Oh, the one that died. Auntie Lauren. She took care of me after my parents died. For most of my life, Auntie Lauren was a vegetable, slowly rotting away in a hospital bed. I don't remember what she was like before that. This picture is all I have to go by. Oh boy. It's me. I look scared out of my mind. I don't remember when this picture was taken, but I look about four or five years old. It's fake, but kind of pretty. Out of sight, out of mind. My window, with the curtains firmly shut. No. I open those curtains and a dozen windows can look directly in here. Those curtains stay shut and prying eyes stay out. That's fair, she lives in the big city. I can understand her hesitance. Just a standard stove-oven combo. Cook. Why bother when every Chinese restaurant in the area delivers? Okay, I think that's everything we can look at in here. I'm not ready for bed. Alright, well, I guess we'll go and visit the psychiatric hospital then. Okay, and now we don't have the option to go to the park. Alright, so Bellevue Psychiatric Hospital. That was kind of creepy. The sign says I'm not allowed back there. Looks like an internal phone. For paging doctors or patients, I guess. Right. Onwards, I guess. I'm not stealing stuff from the hospital. It says that this floor is undergoing renovations. That explains a lot. Just a small transistor radio. It's the security guard for the hospital. Some small keys. One of them is labeled FB. I assume that means Oh box. boy, that's what we call in the adventure game industry foreshadowing. That's going to be used for a puzzle at some point, I bet. What's with the lights? Hey, old buildings, you know? Always got problems. If the plumbing ain't broken, the lights are on the blink. It's giving me a headache, let me tell you. It's a very shiny man. Did you have contact with Lauren Blackwell while she was here? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. She was in uh, temporary care? No, she was in long term. 
That's a whole different floor. This is the floor for temp patients. I see. So what exactly happens here on the temporary ward? It's just that. Temporary. Most insurance plans only cover a two-week stay, so this floor is designed for a high turnover rate. That's why the doctor's offices are usually down here. They need to be on hand when the new patients arrive. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay. Looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door. You can't miss it. Thanks. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. You got my letter, I trust? Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. My aunt, actually. Let's be polite. Also, why is he standing like an anime villain? His office doesn't look cooler, I've got to say. And again, the art is just really nice. Thanks. My aunt is at peace now, wherever she is. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? <laughs> I love this. Complain about your day. Expected response. Cautious response. Yes, we're very good at making the right answers. Maybe we'll not worry. I'm fine. That's good to hear. You receive the ashes? Yes, I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. I want to see what the honest response is. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her. Or even remember her from... before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? Have it, family, none of your business. Well, clearly all of these are evasive sorts of answers. I guess we'll say family and see what her thoughts are on this. She was the only family I had. I guess I felt an obligation, like I had to. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them, because they were more interested in you. Uh, look, yeah, we're going for a paranoid response here. That's kind of creepy. That's really creepy, Dr. Quinton. Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case. And now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. Hmm. Kind of feels like there's a lot of information around her aunt that she doesn't know about potentially, or that we're just not hearing about yet. You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me, I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I, but fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right, she had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. Oh, okay. So they spoke to her, but she's been under the impression that her aunt's been catatonic for 20 years? I'm surprised it isn't like a go feral, go sicko option here. Well, what are they talking about my condition then, I guess? 
Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. Oh. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize. I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. Okay. Well, this is pretty major. I guess if she's been not very sociable and a bit combative when they've been talking to her, then they wouldn't really want to bring this stuff up. But why are they bringing it up now? This is kind of a big deal. Man. I was saying, I really like Rose's personality, like, it just feels realistic for this kind of character who's a bit of a shut-in, but also a bit combative, probably because of her family situation. Alright, what, what did Auntie say? If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open. She thrashed. Her screams. Well, we had to gag her eventually. My God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. Man. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Okay, and then grandma also had something similar. So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same, word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. Well, this is not great news, considering if this has been sort of about at least 25 years, and it seems to be happening younger by about 10 years. I can see that they want to raise it to her, but again, it's surprising they haven't raised it before. So what should I do? Right now? Nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware, is all. And come talk to me if, well there's any concern. I still cannot get over the way that he's standing. He really looks like an anime villain. Which he may be. This is kind of sus. I guess we'll find out. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. Hmm. I cannot ask anything else. I mean, look, that's fair. That's been a lot of information all at once to learn, so probably best to leave. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure.
Okay, well that was fun. Thanks, Charlie man. I guess we go home now. Thanks. Uh-huh. Alright, well there's a lot to chew on there. Go visit? Come in! Oh, we can visit. Hello, Rosa. Come in, come in. Don't mind the pooch, he's harmless. Cute little apartment. I can't look at much from the looks of it. Here, boy! Can I pet the dog? Hi, um, dog? His name is Moti. Right, Moti. See ya. Alright, but this is the last one. Ooh. Go get it! He's very cute. Alright, well, let's have a chat with Nishanti. So, um, how are you? Oh, I'm just fine. Right, Moti? Aren't we just fine? Oh, I've got the flute playing. That was really cool. So, you play the flute, huh? Yes, I play the flute. It's called a bansuri. What about you? Do you play an instrument? Me? No, I can hardly play the kazoo. Let's see. You strike me as being creatively inclined. Are you a painter? A writer? Well, I'm trying to be a writer. I knew it. Anything published? Nothing really, aside from book reviews in the Village Eye. Village Eye? You mean that little paper they sell at the stand? You've read it? I've seen it around, but I've never actually read it. Perhaps I will the next time I see it. Hmm. That dog is adorable. Moti? He's spoiled rotten, but he's good company. He's taken quite a shine to you, that's for sure. Huh. Yeah. Usually I'm not good with animals. You never had a childhood pet? A pet? No, I had a teddy bear. <laughs> well, you probably had the right idea. Moti's a little thing, but you wouldn't know it from the amount he eats. He's very active, it seems. Yes, that probably explains it. See that box of biscuits? I buy a new one every two days. Moti doesn't have a stomach. He has a black hole that sucks in food. Feel free to give him one if you like. Maybe I will. Uh, what about the apartment? You have a very nice apartment. Thank you. A bit small, but that's New York for you. You seem very friendly with the people in this building. Well, I didn't grow up here. I didn't realize it was taboo to chat with neighbors. Well, it's not taboo exactly, it's just... Oh, I know, just one of those unspoken things. I've found that most people are pretty friendly though once you take the first step. People have their defenses up most of the time. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I do. It is interesting, because again, I'm Australian, so I don't really have this sort of experience, but I did recently move to a big city, and it really is that same kind of vibe, especially compared to the country, that's for sure. Why do you play the flute in the park? It's a place to go, I suppose. I was walking there one day, and I had the bansuri with me, so I started playing. Next thing I knew, I had a bunch of people around me. So I go there as often as I can now. It gets me out of this stuffy apartment, and I admit I like the attention. Plus, Moti loves the dog run there. Well, he did, until they closed it down. Hmm, yeah, it feels like that dog run's gonna come up. Why did they close down the dog run? It seemed okay to me. Nobody really knows. It started about a week ago. Dogs started howling, running around like maniacs, acting strange. Some even hurled themselves at the fence door trying to get out. They say it's some kind of high-frequency wave that's caused by electric cables or something. Some high-pitched sound that the dogs can hear, but we can't. But I know better. You know better? Definitely. I noticed these things. I could tell that things weren't quite right. Something in the air. It's not a high-pitched noise. That would only cause a dog pain. This was more than pain. The dogs were scared. What was there to be scared of? I have no idea. But I know what I sensed, just like you did. Me? You sensed it. Don't think I didn't notice. I didn't sense anything. Well, perhaps. Maybe I'm just spouting nonsense. Well, oh, because you had a headache when you walked past there. Hmm. Thanks again for helping me out earlier. I'd probably be sleeping in a hotel tonight if it weren't for you. Oh, didn't you hear? The strike's over. Really? It only lasted a few hours according to the report on the radio. I suppose that's irony. I suppose so. Well, hopefully the strike was worth it. We're getting a bit of paid now. Could I try feeding the dog? Sure, here, take one. I have plenty. 
Go ahead and feed him. He's always hungry. Definitely feels like they'll be puzzled of holding taking the dog with us. All right, cool. Well, I'd better go. Take care, Rosa. Come back whenever you'd like. She really is lovely. I really hope she doesn't turn out to be like a murderer or something. Oh, is he gonna follow me around until I give him a treat? Yeah. Um, what do I do now? Just say, go get it. He'll do the rest. Go get it. See ya. Let me guess, you're hungry again? Go get it! Alright, well, we might head back home now. Okay, so that's quick. What do Looks we get? like it's from Bellevue. Oh man, okay. Well, we'll read all these letters in the next episode. Thank you so much for following me. Please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know what you're enjoying and we'll continue the adventure next episode. Bye!